All right, what up? Welcome back to Separate Bedrooms. We always say it's a special episode, but I do feel I'm extra hyped today, babe. I'm extra hyped. I think, yeah, 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 go on. Yeah, you're definitely recording. It's all good. Either way, I was saying I'm extra, extra excited for this episode. One, because I get to make a dish that I have not had in probably like six years, and I miss this dish adobo pork and chicken we're making this dish because the filipino icon idris is on the show today and i'm super excited because he's my neighbor one of my best homies julius's best friend and then you know like he's just fam this is like a real family episode excited for y'all to see idris and it's just a wonderful day despite all the astrologers saying that there's going to be goofy energy today i feel good oh. i feel good I'm not gonna like defy anything. I'm not. I'm not saying like, nah, people ain't right. But I, I've, I've had a nice day so far. Yeah. We woke up. We went to H Mart. Had a little breakfast snack at a open market. The I best. Came back. I fried up all of this. So right here, what this is is we're doing adobo, which is a Filipino cooking technique, basically to braise meat whether pork chicken you could do it with beef with filipino cane vinegar soy sauce garlic adobo i mean bay leaves and black pepper that is the adobo technique this is the cast iron pan where i fried all of this meat in i'm going to use this grease now in this pan bang this is going to be delicious we will come back to this pan in a little bit so now you see all of that delicious, unctuous oil is in here. Yeah, Julius Cam got that. All right. We're going to come with that oil. Now, you guys know I always China man it all up. I like to kind of just apply my Chinese technique to certain things. Adobo is very, very similar to like a brown braise or a red cooking braise. Most people don't put ginger in their adobo. I'm going to put a little bit of ginger. Maybe like five pieces. All right. Five pieces of ginger went in. I like ginger when I'm cooking with pork. It just gives it a little kind of like spritz of something nice. Mm. Um, <clears throat> we like a spritz. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put all of this meat into this pot. Okay. Right now, all this down there is ginger. We're frying up ginger. Let's go. This chickens. All right. Skin side down chickens. Cover up the bottom. Get these wings banged up. And then very soon, wifey, we will get to the news. We will get to our new segments that we've unleashed in the Mayor Hawthorne episode. Mm hmm we, I will say too, all right, the James Shin episode, wifey was sleeping in a separate bedroom, beefing. It was not as good. I was sick. I was I throwing up no, the no, no, entire no, night blaming. before I'm just because letting of the them fucking know. grimace. I'm letting them know what happened. I'm about, yes, we did get sick from the grimace shake. So even though we loved the grimace shake, it Well, it could have been the grimace shake or it could have been something else. All I know is I woke up at three in the morning with the worst heartburn I've ever had in my life. And yeah. then I started throwing up until like six in the morning. Yo. Which is just like the beauty of pregnancy. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You're fine, and then you're not fine. So she, she wasn't there. I felt like the interview with James was phenomenal. James was a phenomenal guest. But <laughs> your boy, like, yo, the cooking shit's not as fun without wifey. What do you think, Julius? I mean, you were part of it. Well, it's not fun to cook alone. Have to admit, missed you. And I think the show's better when you're on it. Oh, thanks, babe. Yeah. Well. I think the viewers know, too. <sighs> but now, back to our segments, which we started on the Mayor episode. So we, we missed it because you weren't here. Wait, I would just like to talk about the fact that I had no idea the Grimace Shake was, like, taking over the internet until Julia started sending us memes today of yeah. people drinking the Grimace Shake and then, like, on the ground dying. A lot of people are getting sick from the Grimace Shake. <laughs> so, although I think it won the competition, don't get it. For don't, sure. Don't get the Grimace Shake. I think the, gr 
I think you get the grimace shake one time, shit your pants. Like I was, I was on the toilet like spraying <laughs> fucking food because of the grimace shake. Ew. <laughs> You're uh, fucking but gross. it was much better than Emma Chamberlain. But I fuck with Emma Chamberlain. Yeah. I love her videos with her pops. Shouts For to Emma sure. Chamberlain. All right. Here's the other crucial ingredient to adobo: black pepper. All right. I like to get the black pepper a little toasted with the meats. All right. Everything's in there. I'm gonna do rice wine, all right? Mm. Aged Chinese rice wine. This is a little flex for the adobo. All right, you see, you bring up that flavor. Spritz it with that rice wine. Delish. Wow. Oh. The vinegar. Mm. All right, here comes actually. Okay, well we have to talk vinegar, about how we're doing a different vinegar. Oh, I did. Yes, yes. One second. And then I'm going to do garlic. All right. A lot of garlic goes in there. But yes, now we're going to talk about it. Thank you for pointing that out, babe. We're going to talk about it. So usually when I make adobo, people make adobo chicken. They use the classic white bottle datu puti vinegar. All right. I today chose the, the cane vinegar that they use more for like dipping food in it's a more seasoned i would say it's a more elegant vinegar what would you say julia this vinegar versus the dr Kuti white huh? this one's a little more like <laughs> elegant he's so hot he's so fucking high yo that's hilarious. this vinegar right versus the white dr Kuti. i've never even had that one. oh really yeah. yeah this one is I think it's a little less sharp, a little more rounded flavor. Mm. It's almost like gong yuan chu in Taiwanese cuisine to like white rice vinegar. So I'm doing this datu puti vinegar today going down. I like a lot of vinegar in my adobo. Mm. It's really your eating vinegar. I love vinegar. Which wifey loves. All right. You need that laureat soy. <laughs> that laureate. Okay. I'll do a little more soy. Okay. Bay leaves. Mm -hmm. Five bay leaves. Yum. Extra ingredient here. Rock candy. Damn. All right. I'm going to put in two big bricks of free based sugar. <laughs> do, you like, do you like sugar in your adobo? Yeah. Is that the norm? Sugar in adobo? Or the no? norm is really just vinegar, soy, garlic, black peppercorns, bay leaves, salt. Okay. So these are a few little things, but this isn't like fusion. It's not like changing the dish fundamentally is kind of just like adding a few layers. I'm also going to do the coconut milk. All right. Coconut milk, about a half can went in there. Wonderful. Oh yeah. It's going to stew. Damn. Damn, Julius. Let me get some of these juices in here that was in the pan. Mm. Oh yeah, the drippy juices. You need that. Juice it up. And then water. Do more water. Oh, okay. That's basically it. Once it keeps going, once I once I get more water in here, I'm going to put the... Actually, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to put the carcass of the chicken over the top just to drip more chicken flavor in. Just boiling chicken bones down. Oh, carcass. Gives it flavor. And then I'm going to finish it off 
Uh, after it braises for a solid 45 minutes, I'll put in the taro. Uh, a lot of people when they make adobo, they like to put potato with it. Julius's mom likes it with potato. I'm gonna do it with taro. I like the way taro soaks up like island stew flavor like this. Mm. And then we'll get into, I'll get into making the garlic fried rice right here. But first on the agenda, oh, who's, who's this calling here? Oh, we're on the pod. Can't take the call. Can't take your call. Sorry. We're on the pod right now. Sorry, we're potting. We're potting. But um, yeah, this week, yo, there was a lot of new stuff came out this week. All right. Um, this episode probably airs after, so it'll be two weeks in. But uh, two yeah. shows came. The bear came back. And like, it's funny because people always ask us if we watch the bear because it's a restaurant. Mm hmm. We've tried to watch The Bear. I think it's a really well-made show. Like, it's so well, well acted, made. It's well directed. It's so well acted. The lead actor, I don't know his name, Jeremy something, I think. Yeah. He's Shameless. so good. He's real good. But I can't get into the show. It's way too over-dramatized. For yeah. me, at yeah. least. I think the restaurant stuff's over-dramatized, and it's like, you grew up in a beef restaurant. so Yeah, and I, I definitely think there's an element of like this is a this is entertainment this is a show and there needs yeah. to be a hook and there needs to be something that is entertaining for people to watch and drama is usually that yeah but i wish there was more humor oh. yeah i think that it's just like i actually enjoy their lives and stories yeah but i think that they create too many storylines out of like mundane restaurant shit yeah. And people tell me that the show gets better as it goes on. Yeah, we're in season one still. I yeah. think we're season one, episode four, maybe. We just haven't been able to get past it. Maddie Matson is great in it. I gotta yeah. say, my man Maddie, every time he comes he's on, cute. he's fucking incredible comedic relief. Like, yo, Maddie doing his fucking thing on the show. Yeah. That makes me very happy to see. But don't you feel like that energy that he brings? Is That's what you need more, more authentic to what actually is happening in a kitchen. Yeah, in a restaurant he, like that. Because he's an actual chef. Yeah, it's like we're having fun in there. Yeah, it's like even though it is, you are schlepping. It's it's a lot of labor. Yeah, and you're on your feet, and like you most of the time feel like shit, and like it's not great. Yeah, <laughs> like the you are getting yelled at a lot, but you end up having fun, and it really is like a family. It's not this. The dr I don't know. Like I just feel like the drama should be more about the personal lives of the characters. Yeah, I and think the restaurant the two, should be fun. The two main characters on the bear, the the chef and the sous chef. Yeah. Not the cousin. I actually like the inappropriate fucking Italian cousin that yeah. calls everybody cousin who's not actually Italian. Um, I fuck with that dude. His performance is yeah. phenomenal. But it's the two characters, the chef and the sous chef, that care about being chefs. They make working in a kitchen and cooking food so academic it's like watching people on industry but they're in a kitchen yeah you know what i mean and they make it so academic and over intellectualized i'm like bro the people in the kitchen are more like maddie when maddie pulls up yeah that's or like, how i feel fucked up cousin i'm yeah. like more of that please for sure fucked up cousin energy like yeah you're pro like i don't know <laughs> every like restaurant that i've worked at or any any type of place that sells food you have at least like two people that are heavily on drugs and bringing that chaotic. I mean, didn't you knock yourself out on the ice machine at the I beef did. restaurant? No, this wasn't at the beef restaurant. Oh. This was at a Greek restaurant. But yeah, yeah, I was like so hungover one day. I was, I think I was in like the 11th grade or something. I might have not even had my license yet, so it might have been before that. And I did Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings breakfast. And I went to go put my head in the ice machine and I hit my head on it. And then I like knocked myself out and I was like bleeding from my face. That's the energy of a restaurant. That's so, that's you're a, like, that's a beef stir on. You're like you know what 15 I mean? and still drunk from the night before and yeah. sure have a head wound. Like the yes chef and everyone's a fucking chef. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Was Dudes. that at Bauhaus? Was there any of that like yes, yes chef? No, we uh, we called each other by our names, like Ra and like Big Chris. Yeah. And, Did know, people call you Chef though? JJ. Yeah, they would, but yeah. it was like fine. And, but if they didn't call me Chef, I'd be cool. Yeah, you didn't care. Yeah. Okay, so you see what I did here? I used the juices and oil from when we fried up the chicken and pork. 
I fried up the garlic till it's crispy, mix it all up. Now here comes the rice. And this is the rice from our episode. Um, oh, it was an episode. I made Hainan chicken for a dinner with uh, some homies, some work homies that came over. We made some Hainan chicken. We made some ceviche. Delicious. So this is from that night. So this is garlic fried Hainan chicken rice. Very next level accompaniment for the adobo here. And the key to fry rice, old rice, all right? I'd be arguing about this with Danny Boween. He'd be making fried rice with fresh rice. The man's also from Oklahoma. <laughs> What's the difference between fresh rice and old rice? See the, okay, if you peep the old rice right here, it just breaks up nice and the grains maintain their shape. When you fry rice mm. with fresh rice, it's like clumpier. Um, you can definitely make fried rice with it, but it needs a lot more oil. Right? How old is too old? Oh, of rice. never, never too old unless you're that person that was in that hospital in Boston that died from eating old rice. Oh my God. Who was that? There was a person that died. I don't know. You got but this don't on the say internet, that to babe. me now. And then like, no. Now but I that person answer. left the rice out. Like, it could have been rice. That it could be anything. No, no, no. This is like tragic. I actually don't. I like want to talk about it, but I don't want to talk about okay, it. Okay, okay. We won't talk about it. They like straight up. They had. They went out for Chinese food or something, and then yeah. put the leftovers like on the counter as you do. Not. You don't always put that shit away in the fridge, and then. Went back for the rice, I think the next day or maybe like later that night. It wasn't a long period of time. And then there was some bacteria in the food and the person ended up dying. Yeah. Like a violently ill death. I think it was honestly the wheat lobby and people fucking serving gluten trying to hate on rice. Cause honestly, you can't blame rice. That dude should not be blaming rice. Never blame rice. I don't know, man. This is just fucked up. If you have anything bad to say about rice, we're not going to get along. Rice never goes bad. It's never, I've never had bad rice. Except that time in London when this chef tried to bake rice. That was disgusting. How do you bake rice? Yeah. This, the dude I had to work with the first week at Bauhaus fucking baked the rice. Like from like hard grain rice? Bro, he like... He like got some ready-made rice and then reheated it in the oven. And I was like, are you Wait. Like, are you okay? Like, do I need to check you into an institution right now? This is crazy behavior. That's a little crazy. Baked rice. But yeah, so that's the bear. We're gonna keep trying. Like, I really do think it's very well made. All the shouts to the producer, shouts to everybody, but I just think yeah. I think if you work in kitchens or grew up in kitchens, the dramatization of it and the one-sided, like, dramatic nature is kind of yeah. whack. I agree. But, the uh, show that is good, though, that we started is I'm a Virgo. Love it. Boots Riley directing it. It's Genius. Kind of incredible. It's a little, it's a little kooky. Yeah. But I like it. Yo, Boots Riley is one of the most creative people working right now. Yeah. Everything he does... I really appreciate. He fucking goes for it. He does crazy shit. Like, you saw yeah. Sorry to Bother You, right? Yeah. When he did the fucking horses what at the end, done? I was like, Yo, yeah, this is ill. No, I, I love the Boots Riley stuff. I think it's so fun and different. And yeah. the show's really cute. And it actually is well acted. It's well Very made. Well. Like, it's shot really beautifully. Jarrell Jerome crushes as a giant. Jarrell Jerome, <laughs> if y'all don't know from, you know, he, was, he did the Central Park Five show. He also did Moonlight. Like, that That man is a monster. Yeah. One of the best young actors working, Jarell Jerome. For sure. Big fan. And it's like, Boots kind of broke Lakeith in movies, and I think he's doing, like, Jarell's already broke, but yeah. this I Am Virgo shit, he's really crushing it. Yeah, if you like a show that's fun and doesn't take itself too seriously, but there's still definitely serious narratives, it actually talks about more serious things than the bear. Yeah. But with an almost more genuine, less intentional nature. Yeah. And with sci-fi and fucking ill shit. Yeah, and I think it takes you through a range of emotions. Where the bear, you're yeah. kind of just like watching a Safety Brothers film. You're like, have anxiety the whole time. With I'm a Virgo, there's a lot of different emotions. 
Yeah, the parents like, like you have anxiety and it's over a girl trying to find her onions in the kitchen. It's yeah. Like, what is this shit? I don't know. Some people really like that energy though. They watch stuff and they like high intensity, high anxiety. Yeah. I do when it's succession. I think also a lot of people like to feel like their own lives are more dramatic or interesting than they are. Yeah. And I think that's the type of person that'd be coming up to me like, oh, the bear is sick. Yeah. I'm like, that's because you... But I, I like when I'm watching something, I'm, I want to be a little bit more out of my own head. Yeah. And escape and feel good, like yeah. comforted. Something different and yeah. exceptional, like it's something like food, I didn't think of. You know, you want like comfort food. Yeah. I like shows that make me feel that way. Yeah. Basically, I'm a Virgo. So to explain I'm a Virgo, it is Jarrell Jerome is a giant. And his parents are trying to protect and shield him from the world. And they're like, yo, you're a black giant, 13 feet tall in this mm -hmm. world. Like people are going to come for you. And of course... The giant resents that his parents hold him down and protect him. It almost feels like a black immigrant narrative in America. Yeah. And, you know, he also, there is a ill Bruce Wayne superhero type rich man character mm -hmm. in the world. So it's just kooky and wild, allegorical, the most Boots Riley shit ever. Yeah. And uh, highly, highly recommend. Yeah. For highly sure. recommend the show. Garlic fried rice. How you feel? Looks it looks good, Julius. Mm. Oh yeah. yeah. We got garlic fried rice. We got adobo. What you want? What you need? <laughs> I got it all. What else are we gonna talk about today, babe? We were gonna talk about the fact that Eddie and I are about to go embark on a health journey. Oh. Because this pregnancy has really fucked us up. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fine for me, whatever. I should be eating anything I want, but like in moderation. I try to keep it healthy. But I think just inadvertently, you have suffered some of the effects of my cravings. And like, I don't think you just, you want to make a change for yourself. I think you look great always. I think you're so hot. I need and like, to go on a health journey. Yeah. I, I looked at the early episodes, much more Flacco. <laughs> I think we're like 14, 15 episodes in now. Yeah. I'm like, yo, there's definitely two of me. So uh, No, there's not. You're, you see yourself so crazy. But I do think like we cook these decadent ass meals or Eddie cooks them and <laughs> then we eat them for like three to five days. Yeah. Every and episode because we don't throw food away. Yeah. And then we have like two days of being relatively healthy. Yep. And we're like, we feel so good. It feels better. And then it's a wrap. Like, because yeah, obviously we're selling you a food show and we're selling you these recipes. But I have yeah. to say, bro. It doesn't always feel good eating this kind of food, this heavy. So we are going to be mixing in more healthy dishes. Yeah. I mean, this is terrible technique, but I don't have the right size lid for this. So I'm out here using fucking yeah. gigantic. We're also not pot lids. doing it this week. We just got a bunch. We're yeah. making like cherry pie. Yeah. And we're making this. Yeah. And then we're gonna do something else fun. Yup. So yeah. Ooh, this is good. This is kidding. It real smells delicious amazing. There. This is real delicious. As we're there. saying this, I'm like, mm. 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 Give all the coconut milk. It was the light coconut milk, you see? Yeah, that's it's not light. full fat. Nope. The Just health the journey. Flavor. The health journey. The health journey's begun. Is real. Yeah. Health journey's it's begun. begun. Yeah. So the recipes might get a little boring. Or just summary. I think summary is the better word yeah. for it. Like, you know, a watermelon feta salad. Yo, I'll say this too, even if y'all got some healthy shit that you like, oh let God, us know. Tell us. Let us know. Like, please suggest some shit for my fat ass. Julius's girl has been on the ill health journey. I know. Julius's girl lost like 30 pounds. Julius, how much have you lost since she's lost 30 pounds? I'm probably gained like five pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's how it happens. Like one person is losing weight and one person is eating more, I think. 
Because everything I would make for you in the first trimester and a half. I couldn't eat. If, yeah, and if you couldn't eat it, I just ate it. Yeah. And I just was like, whoa, what is going on? I know. I had like a, the second trimester was really good eating for me. I could eat anything and everything. And I was really like, that also made it worse. Because I was like, let's go to the Cheesecake Factory. And let's like yeah. have a Grimace shake. <laughs> and let's go. <laughs> Grimace shake body does. Yeah. And I'm just hungry more frequently. So then you eat more frequently even though you're not hungry. Yes. I got to chill. Yeah. I got to chill, you know. Also, I have all this wonderful weed, so we'd be smoking all this good-ass weed in the house. But not, not my wife is here. I not open me. the door, I go outside. <laughs> I'm, but, I'm not partaking. Um, last night, we did get super, I got super blazed. That movie, movie of the week, all right? Uh, movie Piranhas. Of the week, Piranhas. Claudio Giovanetti. I really like this film. Last week, yeah, we gave good. you The Innocent. I think was was the movie yeah we recommended and we're not like trying to be pretentious and recommend like foreign films like but that was french this is like. italian it's it's just a good movie yeah honestly this one i will say though bad ending yeah i will say this the reason i think i've been watching a lot more foreign gangster street films is because the ones in america are really overcooked like they always are trying to be so clever because I think we've had so many set here. Mm -hmm. But the ones in Italy, the ones in France, they feel like the ones in Asia, like Taiwan, Japan, the, Korea, they feel a little bit more anchored and it's more like genre shit. It gets what you come to the genre for, like action, code, man of the street shit. Yeah. And I would say Piranha's phenomenal child gang, youth gang film. A lot of moments from it remind me of Brighter Summer Day. They definitely, I think the director watched Dust of Angels because it's about young kids getting a bag of guns and the chaos that ensues. Um, if you could watch Dust of Angels on YouTube, I recommend watching Dust of Angels first, then Piranhas, because Piranhas doesn't have a great ending. It takes from a lot of films. Yeah. It does a great job telling the story in uh, Naples, like a wonderful job but ending we were disappointed we don't want to give it away but yeah disappointing ending for sure but i do feel like i agree with you that the foreign crime films emotionally are more honest to me yeah like there's instead of it just being like i'm hard and i follow g code yeah. and i like and i live this this life in the streets like they're real complex people yes and they're they cry and they're vulnerable and they have weaknesses but they're also like living the street life it doesn't define them yeah. which i think is cool and they don't have to have some like tie into zeitgeisty culture i feel like so many yeah. of the crime films in america right now that are involved young people they are way too zeitgeisty yeah what's a good example like what like young crime film do you think I mean, we've watched american recently you know it's not a crime film but films like i'm trying to I'm trying to say like i guess you know what i don't want to say it because it's critical and like mm. it's fucking hard to make films honestly like i'll be no it is for sure <laughs> but like honestly there's a thing where it's like i think people will just know what i'm talking about like they'll they'll figure it out themselves right like i actually love spring breakers i think spring breakers identifies things that are actually going on in that world that yeah the zeitgeist did as the film was coming out like the film made shit go yeah i think that's the thing is i like i think film should be for discovery and a lot of film now is so retroactive like Mm. making the story about something that was hot three years ago and obviously that's the internet but i think as filmmakers part of our job is to have forward-looking vision and identify what's next or put people on the shit and i think a lot of the crime films youth culture films in america right now are retroactive yeah i would agree with that like sam levinson all right like that's an easy one you know like whatever people feel all they feel like assassination nation is a fucking weird film yeah like I, that's not what i want from a crime film it's that was fucking the top 10 things on buzzfeed thrown into a fucking film right yeah. sorry homie you make a lot of money and the shit's not that fire so i feel okay criticizing him 
I feel like after, he's had a pretty good go of it out here. After the idol, I don't think you're the only person criticizing him. Like I yeah, think his, his, I think shit, it's okay. his shit feels not genuine. Um, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. Doesn't but. feel super genuine. Feels weird. I kind of want to watch. Oh, I like, kind of want to keep watching the idol <laughs> in a weird way. What? Watch what? I kind of want to keep watching the idol. Yeah. Like we watched last week's episode, episode three, and we were like, we're not going to watch this again. But in a weird way, I'm like, maybe he is doing something right. You're with this curious show. what's going on. Because I'm like, I kind of want to see if it gets worse. I yeah. kind of want to tune in to see like, it's the, it's the train wreck theory. Yeah. Like that's I can't the thing you got to give Sam away. Levinson credit for. He knows how to make shows and films about things that are polarizing and charged yeah. and push everybody's buttons. And like, I think that might be his prerogative. So he is accomplishing what he wants to accomplish as yeah. a director is ill. He got that cringe porn unlocked. Yeah. You know the one American crime film I liked this year was fucking Cocaine Bear. Because oh it God, didn't it try so to be good. something it wasn't. It was like, yo, this is Cocaine, cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear was so Fire good. ass <laughs> film. Um... Yeah. And we're going to see the Jennifer Lawrence movie tonight. I'm excited for that. Yeah. I'm a big J Law fan. Same. Big J Law. Big Winter's Bone, American Hustle, mm. Silver Linings Playbook. Yo, even Hunger J-Law. Games. I love Hunger Games. Same. J J Law fan. Big Same. one. Same. I like J Law a lot. I think the only one of her films I didn't finish was the one with uh, Brian Tyree. The mm. the dude from Atlanta who I, I really like a lot. One great, great dude, but I don't even know I didn't finish that film. I don't know what movie that is. Yeah. It came out last year, I think it was oh, like on Causeway? Apple yeah, yeah. Couldn't yeah. finish Causeway. Oh my god, she was an up too. I, I always forget mm. she's in so many movies. Crushes. Yeah. She's great. Crushes. We did oh, so this is coming up on an episode. You're gonna get apricot beef tagine on the next episode of Roy Choi and we're also gonna do a cherry pie Mm -hmm. because we went to Peaches LA a nice orchard in East Little Rock this weekend I really enjoyed it I it was so cute if you want to do a you pick definitely go I think their season's ending soon so by the time this comes out it actually might be too late to go sorry yeah but next season but go next season or just keep up with them because it's so cute out there and also there's this restaurant that we ate at like yeah the vincent hill vincent hills saloon yeah and it was fucking fire fire, fire. i had one of the best steak and eggs i've had in a long time caesar salad was ass vincent hill saloon yeah uh, i did notify somebody there but y'all if y'all listening wait you did says it i was like yo this needs more caesar dressing that oh, that caesar yeah. salad like had oil on it it was like watery it was a watery no one caesar. wants a watery putting caesar. the taro in all right putting the taro in but your chicken club was phenomenal dude we like licked our plates clean it was kind of gross yeah um, but yeah go make a day of it it's like so cute yeah peaches la yeah. to vincent hill saloon it's like pacific dining car if you like the pacific dining car mm-hmm. you're gonna like this restaurant vincent hill yeah very cute it's crazy like you can drive an hour outside of la and it's very different i love that the might not be so crazy to a lot of people but it's vi- like drastically different yeah which is cool and it's every which way too it's like you can drive an hour north an hour south an hour east and you get an entirely different state almost yeah like i like going to dog class in sundale like mm-hmm. that shit is mad fun yeah sundale the dogs is really what got us into like more rural California, I feel. Yeah. Cause like the dog breeders live in different places, the dog yeah. schools. Kind of just cool to like explore. Yeah. There's so much to do in California. If you're willing to drive like an hour or two. All right, that uh I feel pretty good about this. We're gonna wait till Idris comes and then we'll serve this dish. It's just braising. Mm. I feel good on the cooking segment. How do you feel, babe? Yeah, I feel great. That's what you get for free. Thank you, everybody.